Design AI have just leveled up their AI consistent character control features. They now have a whole new pose system as well as a few other features to help you take control over your images when using consistent characters. So today I want to show you exactly how that works, but also touch on some of the other tools that make this a really, really powerful platform for creating consistent characters with AI. So I'm in Design AI and in order to actually use this, you first need to actually have a character. If you're not sure how to create one, head over to the little character tab over here and you can click build your character and you can either upload and start with some images or even start with the description. So if I click start with description and type in character name like Warrior Steve and I describe him as an ancient muscle band warrior, bald head, fiery gaze, wearing armor. If you want anything in particular about your character, this is where you would describe it. But I'll go into a little more detail later on in the video. Now, if you want to, you can actually have a reference face. So this is one of the things I think is really cool about Design AI. So you can actually put a face in here as reference. So if I click on this, I have this face, which I downloaded from pexels.com. Looks kind of mean. I click open and I can actually match it to this face. And I come down and choose a style. It could be like a 3D or like an anime. I want to go something realistic and I can go generate character and it will generate some options. Now on the left here, this guy's head's a little bit too, too big for his body because so he looks tiny. But in this one, he looks like a rather large sort of character. So click on this one and I click start training and then give it about 20 minutes or so. And once it's finished, it'll show up here and you can say use inconsistent character or you can just close. But if I click on this, I can start using it straight away. But if you're wanting to know how to get to this section, I'm just going to close it off. Simply head down to character and click generate images. It'll show you a little tutorial, but I'm just going to click done. Now I have Warrior Steve here, and I can actually change the description if I'm not quite getting what I need out of him. And that's just the description of the character. But maybe I have something like Warrior Steve is holding an axe on the battlefield, dramatic cinematic scene from a Hollywood movie, Golden Hour. But now this is where we get down to pose. First of all, we have camera, but I'm going to come back to that because I believe the pose is the most interesting thing to look at. So I'm going to check that out before we move on to these other sections. Now it's currently in beta, but we switch this on. Now this is where you can align it to your actual character. Now everything here looks pretty good, but if you, if for instance, if this wasn't really on the knees, so if it was down below the knee, you would just move this into position to make sure that the actual character frame matches like the hips and movement of the character. So maybe the hips could be a little higher, the feet can come down a little bit, and we get the knees here. And of course the hands, we can align this up so that we get everything where we need it. And we've got like the nose, eyes, and ears. So now I've got this set up aligned with my character. I come down here to edit pose. Now we end up with a default pose here and I can just grab this and start positioning him. So maybe if I want him holding the ax up here, I can have his knee bent, have him like this, have him looking a bit crazy. Or I can come over here to one of these default poses. And maybe what I wanna do is actually pick one like this. None of these are really gonna be suitable, but if I pick this one here, He's kind of in a karate stance. Maybe I have him holding this arm up in the air and maybe I have this knee a little bit more bent and maybe I even just bring him forward a little bit. So I have a pretty cool pose here and if I want to, I can have him looking down by sort of adjusting the ears up. I can also click and change the angle. Use my mouse wheel to zoom in so I can get a bit closer to what I'm doing. Now, if I click on this, there's also these little sort of like axes axis is you can kind of like rotate around so I can rotate the entire head so he's looking down a bit more or looking up so you have a few different options to move these things around and it actually understands the body mechanics pretty well if you move the shoulders the feet will stay in place but if you move the feet it won't have such an impact so you've got a lot of good customization but also a good of a lot of good mechanics to keep it sort of aligned I click save and here is the pose now I can rotate this I can also resize it and just kind of align it to the actual canvas. So I really like this idea of him facing forward, having him here. Maybe I will size him down a little bit. So I'm just going to grab these handles down here. Just use the mouse wheel to go up and down. So I've got him kind of posed up in the frame now. I have my prompt pose mode. I'm gonna just generate this a canvas size, but I can change the aspect ratio. I can also choose a style. So if I want to, I can choose that style and where it says design 3D render, I really don't want to use that for our realistic character. So I click on this. Maybe we go off design realistic version three. So we've got a realistic sort of camera filter. We don't need to worry about the content filter. Instead, I'm just going to hit generate to see what it comes up with. 
And over here, you can see our two images. What's really cool is he has a sword in one hand, axe in the other, and then it switches. I really wanted the axe in the air, so I'm gonna double click to place this on the canvas. And now our image is on the canvas. And of course, if I really want to increase the quality of this, I'm gonna come down to upscale and enhance. I'm gonna put it to upscale. I'm gonna leave creative mode off because I wanna keep the face the same. Upscale it by two, click upscale. And you can clearly see how it's managed to copy that pose from the pose we have on the right and also the face of the character pretty effectively. But also tried out some of the other default poses that come with it. And you can see I've zoomed in a bit on this one here and it does a pretty good job of translating them across, especially this one here with the ballet and it's included that character in the background. So you can see how powerful this tool is for framing up and posing your characters. Now also don't forget at any stage, you can come in and edit this pose if you want to change it before going ahead and rendering, or you can simply click exit to abandon it altogether. Now, if you actually like an image like this, but you want to change the angle a little bit, this is a little bit of a sidestep, but you can click on the image and there's actually a 3D function here. If I click on that, it wants me to remove the background. So I click remove background and the background has been removed. And now we're being told what object we want to create. It's going to stick with GLB, hit generate. And after a few minutes, you get this 3D model you can use. If I click place on canvas, I give it a few moments. You notice there's a bit of a double up. So I'm going to go to my layers and just turn off the original image. And now I come back down and I can actually kind of set up the angle I want. I can enlarge it a bit. Now you can't really crop it off too effectively, but you can make some adjustments to the overall angle. And then instead of going to image to image, we're going to stay in the character section here and we're going to go to reference. Once we're in reference, I click pick image and I can actually pick the 3D model on the canvas. And then I hit generate and you see it's generated two images based off the framing and the angle of that model. And so that's a pretty handy tool. However, the reference function isn't really designed for 3D. It's something you can use it for. But instead what I can do is click pick image. And instead of choosing this, I can upload this image, which I got from pexels.com. Do a simple drag and drop in up here. And now that image is selected, I'm gonna just even get rid of all of the description, just have Warrior Steve there just to see how well it handles this compared to the pose. I click Generate, and you can see how it's managed to copy that pose pretty effectively, and it's actually quite similar in the background and style of the image. His face looks a little bit funny, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how you can fix that soon. But the final piece of control mode I wanna to touch on is camera. So I've clicked on camera, and you can see here we have auto, but first, before I actually get into this, I'm gonna change the prompt to say, I have Warrior Steve holding an ax, dusty battlefield behind him. Now I come down to camera, and at the moment it just has auto for the direction and auto for the shot. I can choose an upper body shot, a full body shot, or a wide shot. I'm gonna go with an upper body shot. I can go right view, left view, back view, front view. So if I decide to go left view, I can actually control the angle and the shot of the camera using this as well. So you can choose between these tools and they offer great control for what you're creating. But let's see what we get when we generate that. And we pretty much got exactly what we asked for. But what if we change the prompt to get something a little more exciting, such as Warrior Steve holding an ax over his head, screaming in a powerful fight ready pose, dusty battlefield behind him. And it's given us pretty much what we've asked for. It's not as dynamic as I'd like, but still, but it essentially does what we've asked it to. So that's covering the character control tools and the new pose tool, but there's a lot more to the character consistency tools available within Design AI. I'm gonna start with some of the uh, less obvious ones before touching on some of the, some of the others under the character section. Uh, for instance, if I grab this image here, maybe I decide I, for one, I'm gonna crop it. Click done. And I'm gonna just resize it here. Now it starts to get a bit fuzzy because obviously the resolution is not very big. I can upscale it, but I want to get a really high quality enhancement of it. I want to smooth out some of the detail. So by going to enhance, instead of upscale, I'm going to go detail and I'm going to leave it off portrait because I do want to add a lot of detail here. I'm going to hit generate. It's now enhanced the detail. If I double click to add to canvas, it looks great, except it doesn't really look like the face that we originally worked with. So by clicking on this image, we have face kit and I can click on that. I can do face repair or face swap. If I click face swap, I can upload an image using the face from earlier. It'll upload that image, detect the target face. And now when I hit generate, it's now giving me a few options to choose from. I'll use this one and now the face has been fixed. 
But on top of that, if I don't like the expression, this is another really key component when it comes to using these uh, face and character tools. I come back over to face kit and I can edit the expression. It wants me to choose the image, so I choose the most recent one, which is this one. And I can change things like the eyebrows. I can make them lower, so he looks a little more angry. I can make his mouth open up a bit more. And I can basically change various areas. So if I wanted there to be a wide grin, I can do that too. Here at the moment, he's in a frown. I can make it laugh. He looks a bit crazy because of the eyebrows. But you get the idea. You can go in and make adjustments to the face. And I have a full video on this and many of the other tools. So I've moved his head up. I can move it to the right. I can even tilt his head a bit if I want to. I have such a higher level of control using these tools. I can even choose a template as well. So we have different emojis here. So maybe I decide to go with this one. So I can edit his face. This one looks a bit ridiculous. So I think I will run with that. Place on canvas. And now his face has been adjusted. So obviously you would want to adjust the mouth closed a little bit, but the fact that you can work with faces uh, on the canvas is really, really powerful. But on top of that, even if I don't want to use my consistent character, I just want the face. Maybe he has a different costume, different scene, something like that. I can go up text to image, type here, go to design general, change it to design realistic, and type in a prompt. I'd say a bald man in a black business suit walks into an ancient temple. Once again, I'm going with canvas size, and I have face match. So I can turn that on, Pick a face. Once again, I can choose from the canvas, but I'm just going to upload my original face for consistency. And you can see here the face is here under face match. And I'm going to put high quality generation mode on. And we've got a completely different looking scene here. Apart from the ancient temple, the only thing that really matches up is this maybe, is uh, the kind of like the time frame. There's no ancient temples here, but it's a bald man in a business suit. So I'm going to click generate. And you can see it's nailed the face. It's the same as our warrior. So it's a completely different outfit, different look, but the same person. So working outside of the consistent character box, if you just need to match someone's face, this is another powerful way to get a bit more consistency across all your generations. So moving on to some of the other character features, if I click on character here, we have generate images, which we've obviously done. We've built a character. We can also manage all the characters we have, including the presets along with the ones we've created. We can also insert characters and create character sheets or even generate a 360 video. If I go to character sheet, I can describe a type of character sheet that I could then use to upload. So maybe I type in something like an ancient female warrior, red hair and armor, a little bit of inspiration from this. However, I want this character to also be realistic. I'm gonna go 16 to nine. We won't worry about face match. We'll go normal, hit generate. And we've been able to generate a character sheet that we can use if we're gonna upload images to create our character. Now coming back, if I wanna generate a 360 video, I click on that and it will generate from the canvas. So I've actually inserted this image here to see how well it handles it. We've got five seconds, I click generate and we get a nifty little 3D rotation video out of that command. But perhaps one of the most useful options is if I have an image like this for my character and I want to insert another consistent character, is I can head over to character and go to insert character. Again, you get a quick tutorial, I click done. And this time I'm going to choose my character, another photorealistic character like Richie here, who's not really going to match the scene, but it'll be interesting to see how it looks. And I'm going to just, I can choose the brush lasso. I'm going to go off brush, change the brush size and just create a space here for Richie to insert him into that part of the image and I just have him here Richie stands with his arms crossed looking happy and then I hit generate and it will pop him into the scene so this means if you have multiple characters that you want to use in your scenes in your images or even in some videos that you might generate with design you can add them in one by one and take a little bit more control with each step. So you can see just how useful all these tools are one by one, but also together. The fact that you can train characters is one thing, but you can insert different characters in different scenes. You can also use things like face control if you wanna get an absolutely identical face across all these characters. And all these different tools allow you to really overcome certain obstacles that could be a real problem. And the pose control, 
means you have just that little bit more control over what your character is doing in each scene. So this is a really, really awesome tool. The way they've put all these tools together into the editor, the fact that you can also edit various images together makes design a really, really top choice for anyone who wants to involve themselves in any kind of storytelling assisted by AI. So check out design. There is a link in the description below if you want to check that out. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving this video a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.